السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Welcome back with a new lecture with LCM SMS. In today's lecture, I will start with atmospheric pressure photoionization ion source, which is less popular when it compared to electrospray ionization or atmospheric pressure chemical ionization ion source, and the type of soft ionization technique, where samples will be ionized in the ion source to get the precursor ion. And then precursor ion will be transferred to the mass analyzer to be fragmented in Q2 quadruple or collagen cell to get the product ions. And also here, in this case, samples will be ionized by the photons generated by the UV light of Krypton lab. And as we see here, mobile face from HPLC will carry the sample and they will be transferred through the spray needle. And by the end of nebulizer gas or nitrogen gas that will shear around the L1 carrying sample molecules, nebulizing them to spray droplets, which consist of spray droplets consist of sample molecules surrounded by solvent molecules. So we need to evaporate solvent molecules to get only the analyte molecules that will be analyzed to get analyte ions at the end that will be transferred to the mass analyzer. So desolvation process. Second step is desolvation process by desolvation gas and heater. By desolvation gas, gas and heater, these spray droplets will be evaporated to get analyte generated, uh, generated analyte molecules and solvent vapors in this region. And here in atmospheric pressure photoionization, UV lamp or discharge lamp or krypton lamp used to produce photons that will ionize, ionize sample molecules, not like in case of atmospheric pressure, chemical ionization, we use corona discharge to produce electrons that will, that will ionize the solvent, after that the solvent will transfer the ions to the, uh, by proton transfer to the analyte molecules, then we will get analyte ions that will be transferred to the mass ions. Here, UV lamp or discharge lamp or curtain lamp will produce photons. These photons will ionize analyte molecules to get these analyte ions that will be transferred to the mass analyzer. So again in that process, L1 carrying sample molecules will pass through the heated capillary or spray needle. Then nebulizer gas, which is nitrogen, shears around the, sample, the L1 carrying sample molecules Converting them to spray droplets, which consists of sample molecules surrounded by the solvent molecules. Then dissolvation process by dissolvation gas and temperature coming from the heater to evaporate the solvent molecules and get analyte molecules. So analyte molecules and solvent vapors will be generated. And then by U photons generated by UV lamp or discharge lamp or krypton lamp, these photons with energy up to 10 electron volt, which is sufficient to ionize analyte molecules to get analyte ions. So the sample molecules will be ionized by the photons generated by the UV light. But how this ionization can happen? Photoionization follow a simple rule. If ionization energy of molecules lower than the ionization energy of photons, so the analyte molecules can be ionized by direct ionization. But if ionization energy of molecules higher than the ionization energy of photons, molecules will not be ionized by these photons, but there will be indirect, indirect ionization by using something called dopant. And we will talk about this point. So the molecule ionization energy molecule ionization energy should be less than the photon ionization energy. But for solvents, most of solvents used in LC methods as example have ionization energy higher than the ionization energy of photons. So cannot be ionized by the photons. But the range of energy, range of energy of these photons can only ionize analytes with ionization energy lower than the ionization energy of photons. Analyte molecules have ionization energy lower than the ionization energy of photons, so there will be no problem and there will be direct 
ionization direct ionization the amide molecules will be ionized by the photons by this way two ways analyte molecules will react with the photons and these photons these photons have energy up to 10 electron volt 10 electron volt which is sufficient to ionize most of analyte molecules so these 10 electron volt will ionize analyte molecule to form at the beginning molecular ion then molecular ion will react with another 10 electron volt from the photons to form the analyte ion as what happened before in the electron ionization we explained that before in electron ionization that analyte molecules will be ionized by the electrons and the electrons have energy about 70 electron volt 70 electron volt 10 electron volt 10 electron volt from them used to transfer that molecule analyte molecule to a molecular ion and then molecular ion with another 10 electron volt will be converted to analyte ion and another way analyte molecule will absorb the photons and transfer to the excited state and then will release energetic electron and convert it to analyte ion here also analyte molecule absorb the photon and become excited excited molecule then the analyte molecule will release energetic electron lose energy and release energetic electron and become radical cation become radical cation molecule react with the photon to be excited then will lose to the excited state then will lose energetic electron to come back to be become radical cation or analyte ion that will be transferred to the mass analyzer at the end but if analyte molecules have ionization energy higher than the ionization energy of the photons in this case there will be no direct ionization but it will be indirect ionization for analyte molecules by using something called dopants these are molecules added to the samples also that have ionization energy have ionization energy lower than the ionization energy of photons so it can be ionized easily by the photons what will happen and that will promote the ionization of analyte molecules what will happen that dopant will react with the photon it will be ionized by the photon to form the ion then this ion will react with the analyte molecule and by proton transfer reaction it will form the analyte ion let's do it analyte ion that will be transferred to the mass analyzer or another way for this double by the photons will be ionized to form double ion then double ion will react with the solvent and this solvent if proton affinity of this solvent higher than the proton affinity for the dopant means that proton affinity the affinity to gain proton to gain the a proton to do that proton transfer reaction proton transfer reaction so in this case what will happen this solvent will be ionized to form solvent ion solvent ion and then solvent ion will react with the analyte molecule so the analyte molecule in this case will be ionized with the solvent ion and proton, another proton transfer to form solvent plus analyte ion that will be transferred to the mass analyzer that was the end of our lecture for today. I hope that you gained some information. And don't forget to share this video and other videos also with your friends. 
to share the information and also help me to improve the channel and don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you and see you in the next lecture inshallah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh